a Vax one power battery. Can I fix it? Well, we're about to find out. If you watch this video, you'll see me strip one of these batteries down and identify the problem on the BMS. And here you can see the BMS, the original BMS mounted on the battery pack. And if we zoom in a little bit, you should be able to see the area that was at fault. And I believe there's a component blown here on the BMS itself. So the BMS originally mounted on the battery pack, and this has been removed from the body of the, of the battery unit itself. And it's soldered onto a number of different points here on the BMS. So the first job was to remove the BMS from the battery pack. Now I used the soldering braid and I have to admit a couple of times I caused a few shorts and a few sparks. So if you're going to do this, just be very, very careful. Or at least not as stupid as me. So I had another BMS that I'd bought for another project that I thought would be adequate for this. And I was going to use this BMS. It was originally bought to convert a nickel cadmium drill to a lithium drill. I haven't got around to doing that project yet. Um, the BMS was floating around. So I was going to use the BMS to replace the original one from the Vax One Power Battery. As you can see, it's quite a nice unit. I bought it from AliExpress. It was about, I don't know, three pounds or something like that. In order to make it work, I needed the connectors. So I desoldered all the components that were close to the five contact pins and then just hacksawed the board in half, filed it off to make it a bit neater, and then uh, glued it into the original um, battery holder. And it was quite a neat job. So that's going to allow me now to make all the connections up to the vacuum cleaner. And then I realized that I didn't actually need to use the BMS at all. All the BMS is going to do for me is provide me with a way to charge up the batteries in the battery pack in a safe manner and a controlled manner and to stop me discharging the batteries below a certain level. So for a test, I didn't really need to bother with the BMS. I could just wire the batteries directly to the output pins for the battery pack unit. And that, that, so what I've got now is a direct feed of the batteries out onto the um, negative and positive pins of the battery pack. So in theory now, if I plug this into the vacuum cleaner, we should get some response because it's no different wiring it directly than having, having the power there when the BMS is wired in. And this is what happened. It certainly didn't like that new, uh, that new configuration without the BMS being in place. It just refused to start. Now it is a good vacuum cleaner and this is what it's like with a genuine battery. So we know that works. And what I think the problem is, is here where we've got these little connectors for RX and TX. And what I think is happening is the BMS is actually sending a signal out to both the charging unit and the appliance to let them know that it's a, a genuine um, a genuine battery unit that's being used. And if the appliance doesn't get that, that message from the BMS, then it just refuses to play. I think it's just a bit of clever engineering by the manufacturers of the, of the appliance and the battery pack, just to make sure that people like you and me can't bodge together our own battery packs. So, I guess the answer is, can we fix it? And the answer is not me. Um, not to say it can't be done, but somebody's going to have to work out what that uh, communications protocol is and what the messages are that are being sent. I'm just going to take somebody a bit cleverer than me to do that. Anyway, I hope you found the video interesting and enjoyable. Please like and subscribe, and thanks very much for watching.